have you ever wondered what this setting actually does? It's often overlooked because its name is somewhat misunderstood, or just not understood at all. So let's break it down. Ambient means immediately surrounding, and occlusion means blockage. Now combine the two, ambient occlusion for gaming is defined as the point-by-point -point technique by which object exposure is calculated with respect to immediate surroundings. Think of it as a shading technique. In games without ambient occlusion enabled, shadows are only generated by objects blocking light from a particular directional source like the sun. This is noticeable especially especially outside in games. Without these shadows, games would seem very unrealistic. But ambient occlusion is a more subdued technique that doesn't necessarily involve light direction. Here's an example. In this frame, the left model represents a scenario without AO, the right with. Both appear realistic, but the left model seems overexposed and lacks a bit of contrast, whereas the right accentuates even the finest details through the use of additional shading. But here's the catch. The extra shading isn't the result of the directional light source. Pay close attention to both of their heads. The shadows they yield imply a light source shining in this direction, and the model on the left features shadows accurately generated as a result, all over the face. But the right model takes things a step further. It also features shadows generated by itself. What I mean by that is that the creases and abrupt changes in the shape of the model's face are also producing shadows. Very small shadows, but enough to enhance the model's textural details. And that's kind of the point of ambient occlusion. While tessellation seeks to physically alter and improve structural accuracy and three-dimensionalism, enabling ambient occlusion generates shadows produced by the tessellation itself, not necessarily the directional light source. The technique uses ambient light, hence the name, and immediate changes in space to produce shadows that aren't necessarily amplified by a directional source. You can actually mimic this effect by tinkering with contrast levels, which will accentuate those slightly darker tones, but the two are not directly related. You can, however, experiment with a in games like GTA 5, which will let you turn it on and off with a single click. I actually encourage you to do that, I think you will see a difference. AO or SSAO can actually have profound impacts on visual detail without slicing into your frame rate. Your results, of course, will vary depending on hardware and the game in question, but ambient occlusion isn't something you should just ignore in the graphical settings panel. Do let me know what you think about ambient occlusion. Let me know if you like this style video and if you'd like to see more of them in the future. You know the routine thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us. Thank you.